Okay, so we're going to be starting now chapter 14, which is exponentials and logarithms. And this is a chapter that people usually find quite tricky. So I would very much recommend watching all of the intro videos, even if you think um, they're pretty easy. Um, I'm going to be trying to really explain some of these concepts in a lot of detail. So what we'll be doing is we're looking at these functions called exponential functions. We're going to be learning how to sketch them. We're going to be doing some modeling with them, some differentiation, some logarithms, and then doing some um, nonlinear models um, of some other bits as well. But It'll all make sense when we go through this. So we're going to start off with something called exponential graphs. Now up until this point we've dealt with x um, in lots and lots of different situations. We've dealt with things like x squared graphs, we've dealt with cubics where we might have something that looks like this. We've also dealt with functions like sine x, cos x, tan x. We've even looked at functions where we have reciprocal graphs like 1 over x. So there's one kind of area that we haven't investigated at all yet and that is the exponential graph where you have x in place of the power and this power that we have at the top here is sometimes called the exponent. So that's why it's called exponential graphs and really it's just trying to investigate what happens when we put the um, when we put the variable inside the power, how is that going to produce something? So I have said here, we're gonna plot the function y equals two to the power of x. And sometimes this comes up in GCSE, but it's not a huge topic. So I think it's worth having a look at this. So first of all, let's look at some of the easy ones. Let's look at just this one here, where it's two to the power of one. Well, two to the power of one is obviously just going to be two. The next one is two to the power of two, which is four. You have two to the power of three, which is eight, and then two to the power of four, that's two times two times two times two, that is 16. And so you can see these coordinates that I've got here. I've got the coordinate one, two, two, four, three, eight, and four, 16, I won't be able to actually show on the graph there. Now this one, it's worth rem reminding yourself that you've got something to the power of zero, and something to the power of zero is always equal to one which is why we've got this coordinate here. It crosses the y-axis at one. This one is two to the power of minus one. So it's actually gonna be a half. And then two to the power of minus two is a quarter. So you can see that here, I've got minus one with a half, and then I've got minus two with a quarter. And as the power becomes more negative, it gets closer and closer to zero, but it's never actually going to be equal to zero. And if you imagine doing something like, I don't know, two to the power of minus eight, that's gonna be one over two to the power of eight, which is gonna be pretty small. So if I do two to the power of minus eight, we get 0 0.0039, et cetera. It's never gonna actually be zero, but it's gonna start going towards zero. So what I've written down here at the bottom is, it's, is you need to ensure that you can distinguish between an x to the power of a, in other words, like an x squared, an x cubed kind of graph, a polynomial, um, and an a to the power of x exponential term. These are really, really different to each other. In this one, the variable is in the power. In the ones we've looked at so far, the variable is in what we call the base. So in the former, the variable is in the base, and in the latter, the variable is in the power. Just repeating what I've said there. Two to the power of x behaves very differently to x squared, both in its rate of growth, i.e. exponential terms grow much faster and how it differentiates. We don't know how this differentiates yet. You do know how this differentiates. So we're gonna explore a little bit more about these exponential functions. But before we do that, why do we want to explore them? So I've written here, why are exponential functions important? Well, different functions can be used to model different real life scenarios. I'm gonna do a bit of a recap here. Quadratic functions, for example, are useful for modeling how maybe an arrow is fired by an archer. And you can see this is a good model to think about how that arrow going up in the air would fly through the air and fall into the ground. Linear functions that we've looked at in chapter five can model things that have constant growth, adding the same amount each time. So this might be something about how the height of a plant is growing if it's growing about if it grows the same amount each month. Reciprocal functions can model two things that are inversely proportional to each other, and they produce this kind of graph that we've seen before here. But exponential functions can be used to model scenarios where we're multiplying by the same amount each time. So linear models were good when we're adding the same amount each time. Exponential functions are when we're multiplying by the same amount each time. 
And these are some things you should be familiar with from GCSE. So for example, we could use S equals 1000 multiplied by, there's actually a secret multiply symbol in here, 1.05 to the power of T, either of those things mean the same thing. We could use that formula to model our savings in a bank account with interest, where each year we have 1.05 times as much, i.e. with a 5% added on interest. Multiplying by 1.05 is adding 5% or increasing 5%. And so this graph that I've got drawn here is an exponential function. You can see that at the start, where there's zero years, there's a thousand pounds in the bank, and that over time it's increasing by 5% each year. It doesn't have a straight line like a linear model, but it's got this curved path that we've got here, which is an exponential model. So you can already see it's going to have some uses in finance, meaning it's going to be a very important function for us to study. I've also got a different example here. This time I said we could use this formula, P equals 900 multiplied by 0.86 to the power of T. And this could model a population of an animal species that each year is being multiplied by 0.86. And if it's multiplying by 0.86, that means it's actually decreasing by 14%. Multiplying by 0.86 is equivalent to decreasing something by 14%. So this population, that when it's at zero, it looks like this population is starting at 900. It looks like each year it is going to be decreasing by 14%. And so you get this curve, which is an exponential type curve that says how the population is gonna change. And again, you can imagine that exponential functions are gonna be very important in like demography, which is the study of populations. And then last of all, perhaps a very familiar um, scenario that's been in the news a lot for the last year is that exponential functions can be used in modelling the spread of COVID-19 and other contagious diseases. So this one is actually some real life data that says about the total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases back from 2020. And you can see this shape that we've got here has got this exponential type shape. And that's because exponential functions can be used to model the spread of viruses. So in the next video, we're going to investigate what these graphs look like.